G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to show you how to grow ginger from store-bought ginger in containers. The second step is particularly important. Let's get into it. Firstly, why grow ginger from the store or supermarket? Well, we know what a great food ginger is to eat for its health qualities and flavouring ability, but it's also very expensive to buy, especially these days. So growing your own ginger can save you a ton of money. And sourcing the roots or rhizomes from the store or supermarket can be cheaper than buying the plant already growing from the nursery. Step number one, go and buy some ginger. Store, markets, supermarkets are probably one of the cheapest, or if you know someone who is growing ginger, just go and bludge some off them. Buying organic certified ginger is good if you don't mind paying considerably more. Look for nice big healthy pieces of ginger. Stay away from old, shriveled, dehydrated pieces of ginger because they might be too far gone and not have the energy to sprout successfully. If the ginger pieces have an eye here and there, that is extra good because it shows that it's ready for shooting. Step number two, soak the ginger in water. Commercial ginger is often treated with a growth retardant to stop it from sprouting prematurely on the supermarket shelves. They'd have to change the product name from ginger to ginger plant. And you know how corporations hate those extra administration costs. Anyway, to dissolve this growth inhibitor that has been sprayed over the ginger, which is a good reason to peel it before eating, by the way, soak it for at least 24 hours in some water. It's as simple as that. And don't forget to remove it or it'll ferment and turn into ginger beer. No, it probably won't. But if it did, it'd be awesome and weird. Step number three is plant the ginger. Get a larger container or several pots and fill with a premium potting mix, leaving a few inches of space at the top. Divide the ginger into smaller pieces. In this example, I've left them in larger chunks, but you can divide it in smaller and get more out of your ginger root. However, I have found that some smaller inch sized pieces, for example, can shrivel, rot and die and not grow as well as those larger pieces, especially if they do have an eye already formed. Spread the pieces evenly around the container and then just cover with some more potting mix. Ginger doesn't need to be planted deep as the rhizome tends to grow sideways more than up and down. Burying too deep may naturally inhibit growth and subsequently cause decay. <coughs> water occasionally so the container doesn't dry out, but don't water too much, especially in those early days before sprouting, because you don't want those rhizomes to rot in the pot. And just another point to note, it is not unusual for ginger to take its time to sprout. So if by mid spring you see nothing, don't be too concerned because it will start sprouting eventually. I've seen times when ginger has only started sprouting at the beginning of summer. Step number four, maintenance of the ginger plant or plants. Once the ginger has sprouted and is growing normally, make sure that it's getting enough water. Ginger does enjoy a lot of water, but like most plants, it doesn't like to grow in boggy, anaerobic environments. So keep the water up, but don't let it sit in water for long periods. Having said that, if you do have a good, well-draining potting mix in the container, you will likely need to water often. I generally water container ginger every day through summer because you don't want the plant to suffer from water stress in the hot subtropical weather, as the plant will simply shut down during the essential growing period and even start cannibalizing its rhizomes 
for extra moisture. You don't want that and you don't want weeds either competing with your ginger. So make sure that you are weeding the container regularly. When it comes to fertilizer, a regular sprinkle of an organic based liquid fertilizer or liquid feed, say once a month, will help the plants get the nutrients they need to grow strong. Since I planted this ginger in a premium potting mix with a slow release fertilizer already added, I didn't add any extra fertilizer throughout the whole growing period, except for once when I did water in some liquid fertilizer from the plant doctor, it was some Activate Mate. And I did that at about three months, at about the halfway mark of the full growing period. I'm thinking due to the extra rain we've had, that may have washed a lot of nutrients through the container. I've got a gut feeling that I should have given it some more fertilizer, but we'll soon see once we get to harvesting, won't we? Step number five, harvesting container ginger. Well, a ginger growing period can be any time really, but it's usually around four to six months. In fact, young ginger is one of my faves because it isn't as potent and doesn't require peeling. To get the most growth out of container ginger, I recommend to let it grow full term through summer, harvesting when the leaves die back between mid-autumn and early winter. You can leave ginger in the container and just harvest when you need it. And what you don't use will re-sprout next season. And I often do this with my ginger crops planted out in our raised bed garden. However, you do run the risk of the ginger rotting in ground. This is a little bit of an example of it here, especially if you have a wet winter. So I think the best way for container ginger is to harvest the lot and then store it in the pantry or somewhere dry. And it should keep well and what you don't use, just simply replant it again. We've had lots of rain and stuff all sunlight. So even though ginger likes water, it also loves sunlight for it to grow best. Yes, ginger will grow well in places that may get shaded out a bit, but when it gets sun, it needs to be strong to give the plant the energy to grow good roots. Our extra rainy lack of sunlight summer, followed by our unusually wet winter, has been terrible conditions for growing ginger. But let's harvest this container crop of ginger and see how we went. I'll start by just cutting these stalks off. Give it another week and they'd all be totally dead anyway. A ginger flower, nowhere near as nice as the ornamentals. Move that there, cut that off. That one was a prop. Put that there. In fact, I did get that out of the container. It has died back a bit here on top. I can already see it. With some of the roots, I can see rotted with just the skin left. It might have been the old tubers and they just expended, but we'll see. I think I'll just, I'll just tip it out. I reckon that's the go. Wow, look at the actual root ball. Who would have thought that ginger would have covered so much area? That is unusual. Well, it's good to see. And let's just break this, this up. It should be pretty much all on the top. Yeah, oh, well, that's fairly deep here. There we go. You can see how the actual not the rhizomes, but the ginger roots have penetrated down. There's still some fertilizer left in this too. That half can go back in the pot and I'll save that. No need to throw it away. I can reuse it, but let's just keep working on this now. Whoa, what a chunk, oh my goodness. That's a surprise. Look how fused that is. Oh, that must weigh, I reckon, a kilo and a half. See if I can pull that apart. Oh, there we go. It actually was one piece. This has a little bit of rot in it. I can see and I could feel, but you could cut that out and use it. You'd use this straight away rather than trying to store it. Some more beautiful root system. Really good. 
lovely. That there, another small piece, another piece on top of that. Let's keep also the rotten sort of skins that are left, put them onto the side so we can have a look at them. And I'll put the rest of this back into the pot. Let me give this a bit of a clean off, just a quick clean so that we can see it better. Even, oh, I can see oh, there's still the, there's still the old tag on here. Uh, so this is the, this is the old pleated stuff that I first planted. This was probably used up as energy for the ginger plant to get it going. And then it grew the rhizomes from that. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. I mean, look at the size of these rhizomes. They are fat as. I mean, yeah, I've done better. It hasn't been the best season for ginger, but I tell you what, I've done worse in better seasons. So yeah, that's nice. I'm really happy with what we planted in the one container to what we have now. We'll use some of this and then replant it next season and you'll just keep multiplying. And that's how we've got all of our ginger. You know, we've got a ton of it growing in the garden, as you probably know if you've been following me for a while. And it all started from just this. One or two rhizomes purchased from the store. I wish you could smell this. It smells <laughs> incredible. These older pieces here and the ones that have a bit of rot in them, well, we'll just use them up first. There's no use trying to store them because they won't make it. But you can store some of these bigger pieces and use them next season if it makes it that far. If you're a big ginger fiend, well, maybe you'll just eat it. But try to save at least one or two small pieces to plant and regrow for next season. A little ginger goes a long way. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big, massive, fat ginger finger thumbs up and share the video around. Also subscribe if you haven't already. Remember sharing my videos around is one of the best things you can do for my channel. It helps me out heaps. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cool.